In this video, I'm going to be talking about a Python library that will help you to make sense of data. And so without further ado, we're starting right now. So the Python library that I'm talking about is called Shapesh. And it is a library that allows you to get access to the underlying logic of your machine learning models. So in plain English, this means that you're going to be able to understand how various features contribute to the performance of your machine learning model. And so let's have a look at this website. So the features of Shapesh is that it is compatible with Shap and Lime, but inherently it is using Shap in the back end. And you could easily display interpretable plots using a few lines of code. And here it says that it is compatible with category encoders and also sklearn column transformer. It supports global and local explainability. And the great thing about this Shapash library is that it creates a web application that allows you to interactively navigate through various plots in order to see how the features are contributing to the model performance. And so this includes both global and local features. Another great thing is that it supports regression and classification, as well as support supporting several machine learning algorithms provided by sklearn, lightgbm, catboost, and xgboost. So let's have a look further. Okay, and that's it for the website. And let's have a look at the GitHub. Let's go to Shapesh repository, and it's made by MAIF from France. And so this is the GitHub of Shapesh. And there's also a Medium article, so you could also check that out. They also have a YouTube video about Shapash, but it is in French. So the objective of Shapash, as stated earlier on, is to allow you to make sense of your machine learning models. Okay, and so this is an example of the plots that Shapash will be generating. And this is an animated image showing the various features. So you can see the feature importance. But everything is interactive, right? You could click on each of the features, and then you'll be seeing the corresponding data in the various tables and the various subplots. So typically I say that I like to use Random Forest because it offers great interpretability of the underlying contribution of the features to the model performance. And so seeing Shapash in action really impresses me because aside from a static feature importance plot, you could also explore these features interactively. Okay, so this is an example of a local explanation and how various features contribute positively and negatively. And this is a schematic overview of Shabash. So you're going to see here that you're going to be performing the typical data science process by performing data preparation, performing feature engineering. You're going to be building the model, evaluating the model performance, and Shabash will work at this level. So typically, if you want to understand the underlying contribution of the features, you might use Random Forest. It has a built-in Gini index. And so you could make a feature importance plot or alternatively, you could also make use of SHAP or LIME libraries in Python. And so these also provide great interpretability of the model. And so Shapash is extending SHAP and LIME into an interactive web application. Okay, let's have a look at the documentation. So this is how you will install Shapash, pip install Shapash, and, and the schematic that I have already mentioned. Okay, so some of the dependencies that you will be needing. Okay, so they're explaining Shapash in three minutes. So let me show you an example of the code of Shapash. So you could refer to this as you develop your own data science project using Shapash. And it provides you all of the necessary information, how to get it installed. It has some tutorials for you to follow and also some documentation of the various objects of Shapash. Let's go back to the GitHub of Shapash, go to the tutorial. And you could have a look at the various tutorials that they provide here. So they have ample resources to help you get started. So before I show you the code here, let's have a look at the actual web application of Shapash. So this is the web app created by Shapash upon running the web app. And so here you see the feature importance, and you also see the scatter plots of the features as well. And as you hover through the various points, you also see it interactively. And the local explainability is provided here. Okay, so you could modify this, and it will be updated. So here you can see the positive and negative contributions. So let's make it bigger. Okay? So you could zoom in, zoom out for each of the plots. And this is the corresponding data frame. 
Okay, you can sort it as well, right? And the corresponding plot will be updated. If you click on the particular feature, it will be shown below. Right, and so this is an example of a regression data. You see they have some settings here as well. Okay, very nice. You could also set the parameters here, features to plot. Let's say we wanted 10. Okay, so it's right here. It's the maximal features to use. Okay, so it's a great web app to get you started in interpreting the models. So let's have a look at the tutorial here. So this is an example of how you could build a simple Shapash web app. And so essentially you'll be loading in the data sets and then you're going to be encoding the features. So this really depends on your data science projects. If you need to encode features, if it is categorical, then you're going to be splitting the data. And so you're going to be making use of the train test split function from sklearn. Then you're going to be building a model. And so here you could use the LGBM regressor, and then you build the model by using the fit function. And this is where Shabash comes in. You're going to be importing the smart explainer from Shabash, and then you're going to be creating this object, XPL. Okay, and then the features dictionary will be the house dictionary. And so that will be the label for the features. And then you're going to be compiling this XPL object that we have created earlier using the smart explainer function. And then you specify what is your X data. So we specify here to be X test. What is the model? And the model is here. It will be a regressor. And whether you perform any pre-processing, and here we use the encoder. So the encoder is right here. It's because we need to do the categorical encoding. And then the regressor is right here. And that's the name of the model that we have built. And so they are the input argument for the compiling of the XPL. And that's all. And then you just can start the web application by using the run app function. And then you give it a title. And so the title is house prices. Okay. And the example of the app is shown before. It's the same thing. And it's the demo that I have shown you earlier. It's this one. But then if you're running it locally, it will be in your own computer. And then you could stop the web app by using the kill function. Finally, you could also export your features contribution into pandas and then you display the data frame and then you could also pickle it the XPL object so that you can make use of it in the future and relaunch the web app again. Okay, so future videos, I'll be showing you how to use this Shabash in action for other data sets. And so if you're finding value in this video, give it a like, subscribe if you haven't already, hit on the notification bell in order to be notified of the next video. And as always, the best way to learn data science is to do data science and please enjoy the journey.